Hey guys, welcome back. Carl here. It's another Thursday. Can you believe it? I mean, the summer is just slipping away. Before you know it, the snow is going to be falling. Let's not think about that right now. What I wanted to talk to you about today was a company called Gustin. And Gustin is a Kickstarter success story. They began on Kickstarter and then they started their own business model, which is very much the same. So it's kind of crowdfunding. The way it works is you'll go on their website, you'll take a look at what they have to offer. They keep offering new things and every week it seems like they'll come out with a new product. You can go there, you can back it, and if it gets funded, well then it goes into production. A couple months later, you'll get your garment in the mail. So my latest acquisition from Gustin is this pair of Selvedge jeans. And this is an, a really unique combination. So this has a red weft, which you can see on the inside here, and then the warp is an indigo, like your typical denim jean would be, your typical blue jean. And it makes this really interesting, kind of dark purple, almost plum color. I just thought it was really, really interesting, really unique, and I'm very, very happy with it. So let's go a little bit into the construction of this pair of jeans. So Japan has really cornered the market as far as selvedge denim goes. The Japanese have a really high interest in post-World War II Americana. So they bought up a lot of these old shuttle loom machines that used to make denim the way that they was made pre-1950. And now there's become a little cottage market. Actually, it's really kind of exploded since the 80s of selvedge denim. And we'll go into what selvedge denim is and all that stuff in another video. So aside from Japan, there's very few places you can find old world selvedge denim. One of the places is in the United States here at the Cone Mills White Oak factory. So Gustin will source their denim from a, a bunch of different mills uh, depending on what they're after, especially when it comes to unique combination of colors like this. One of the only other companies I've seen do something similar is Naked and Famous Denim who really make some interesting combinations and, and, and they do things with hemp. They even have a pair of glow-in-the-dark jeans. If there's enough interest, maybe I'll do a review on one of those in the future. So obviously the denim is front and center on a pair of jeans like this, but a few of the little details is what makes the difference between one manufacturer and the next. So some of the things that I really like about the Gustin jeans is the fact that they have little recessed rivets, and that may not seem like anything important until you go and lead against your car with a pair of Levi's and you scratch your finish. Another thing that's common to see in a lot of these selvedge companies is button flies. And what I really like about the Gustin button fly is that they have these really chunky kind of thick buttons. And most buttons will be thinner like this one here, the main button, but these are really thick. So when you're digging there and you're trying to, to make these up, especially when it's new and it's still stiff, it makes it pretty easy to do. That right there is one of those things that I wish I could have on every pair of button fly denim that I own. So the front pockets are completely lined, you'll see that there. The back pockets, however, are only half lined. So the, the lining only starts about halfway down the back pocket. And now where this is nice, if you ever had a pair of jeans that you really liked, and then your keys or anything metallic or sharp that you put in there has worn through, it's kind of a bummer because now you can't put anything in there without it falling through. This just adds another layer of protection and if you keep an eye on it, it's easier to replace the lining than it is the actual denim, especially when it's a unique color like this. You'll never get it to match. Another little detail that I really like is the belt loops. Some of them, have the self edge ID on them. Not all, but the one right here near the back leather patch has that. It's just kind of a cool little thing, something sort of unique, I like it. They're not all that way, as you can see, not all of them have that, but this one right here by the Gustin leather patch does, and I like it. Now the self edge ID on this pair of denim, or the combination of colors on the edge, is white with a blue stripe. And if you choose to fold this up, which a lot of people do, it shows off that ID really nicely and that splash of red. So this is a really interesting color combination. Anybody can get blue jeans. Yeah, they're all kind of different, but this is very unique. And what I like about denim is that it gets better with age. These will wear through and you'll start seeing some of the red come out. So where the knees are wearing through or maybe on the back or the whiskering in the front, that's all gonna kind of change unique to the way that you wear it. And that's true with any kind of denim. So all in all, I think they're a bargain. These were just over $100. And here's the problem is that I'm not gonna be able to tell you about this pair of denim and then you're gonna be able to go buy it because these are already done. They've already been funded long ago, I think in May. So this is a limited run. 
the best thing you can do is go and check out companies like Gustin. Go check out Gustin and, and subscribe to their newsletter. Every day, they're gonna send you an email with what they're offering. And depending on how the interest is, it may get funded right away. And that means production will be quicker and then everybody will get their goods even faster. But most of the time, it takes a few weeks. And then by the time it goes into production, it takes a few months until you finally get what you ordered. Sometimes I know that could be a deal breaker because I am really impatient when it comes to getting something that I ordered. But that's the nature of their business model. It allows them to keep their prices low. Like I said, these were just over $100, which is a really good bargain for a pair of Selvedge denim of good quality. It helps them not keep a large inventory or order hundreds of pairs in different sizes and not sell them and then have to go through sales and all that kind of stuff. This is a very smart and very lean business model, although it does require you to be sort of patient. So these jeans are made in San Francisco. Of course, they import the fabric from places like Japan or maybe here in the USA. They always specify where they get it from. Most of the time, it's very, very high quality stuff. I can't say that across the board because I don't have a sampling of everything that they've offered, but they've begun to branch out into things like Horween leather bags and wallets and shoes and shirts, and they're all kind of unique. But one thing I will caution you on is that be careful with their sizing. Now, their sizing is not vanity sizing as you'll typically find, and most of the time that's put on clothes just to make you feel better about it. So a 34 is what I usually take in denim. These are a 36, which is actually a little bit closer to my waist measurement. I'm more on the 35 side. These are a tad loose, but I would rather have them a tad loose than a little bit too tight. So I ended up getting the 36. Make sure that if you order something from them and you're gonna take that time to wait, that you get the measurement perfect. Something that's been mentioned in the comments, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, is I don't typically show how you'll style something. I'll give a review on it, I'll give you my honest opinion on it and the company and all that, but I won't tell you how I'll put it together in an outfit. So I would love to describe to you a few of the ways that you can put this with something else and make it look good. I'll just make this a new segment of each review since there seems to be interest in it. So this being a very saturated, very deep shade of purple, one of the best things that you can do to match up with it is take a look at your color wheel. This is really important. As a matter of fact, I always have one saved in my photos on my phone just for a quick reference. And if you'll notice the violet red, which is what I would consider these, is directly across from green yellow, which means that those are complementary colors and it's a very bold contrast. So if you put a greenish yellow shirt with these, it's gonna be a, a pop of color, like, whoa, here he comes. It'll look good together, but if you like bold, that's where it's at. One of the ways that I would style this, however, is I would put something with it like a rust color, maybe a brown, kind of some yellows in there. If you notice, that's actually the color of the stitching that they used on it, and it looks really good, very complimentary. So something like that would look good, not so in your face, which isn't really my style. I don't wanna shock people with what I'm wearing, but something that is a little bit more harmonious like that and a little more subdued would be perfect. So if you had something that was like a straw yellow, a brown, it would look excellent with this. But honestly, people don't give violet or purple Purple enough credit. I think it's one of the most versatile colors out there. It looks great with hues of red. It looks great with blue. It complements most skin tones. It's a really versatile color. And I've found myself reaching for purple, violet ties and shirts more often than almost any other color. It just looks really cool. It's kind of unexpected and it's unique. So if you haven't checked out Gustin already, go and check them out. Subscribe to their newsletter so you get alerts every day on what they're making. They're doing some really cool stuff at really affordable prices. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Thursday.